so I'm talking with Breaking Bad composer Dave Porter, who will be uh, wrapping up the Emmy winning series this summer with the fifth and uh, final season. But uh, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Thanks so much for having me. So I guess to start off, uh, how did you get started in music and what led you to film and TV composing? I uh, come from a pretty musical family and uh, grew up from very young uh, playing the piano. I think I started at five uh, and uh, had a classical education in music from, from that, that early on and uh, continued that uh, into high school and I started to really move away from performing other people's music and experimenting with creating my own. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then studied uh, at Sarah Lawrence College, which is just outside of New York City, a um, liberal arts school where I could devote an awful lot of time to studying music and also be very connected to uh, the music that was going on in New York. Right, right. Where I uh, ultimately moved uh, after school and uh, started my professional career there in uh, Philip Glass's studio. He has a studio in uh, downtown Manhattan. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so when, how did you, when did you make your way to, to Los Angeles? Yeah, about 10 years after that. So I, I, uh, I worked for a, a number of other composers in New York and then actually ultimately with some other guys there started a, a company, a production company for music that was uh, doing uh, the kind of music that, that gets done commercially in New York a lot of sports and news and documentaries right. uh, and then uh, came out here in uh, early 2002 because I always wanted to pursue doing dramatic uh, you know music for dramatic mm-hmm. television and film and that really just didn't exist in great quantities in New York mm-hmm. and uh, so how did you get attached with uh, Breaking Bad? Uh, I was fortunate enough to know two people uh, who were involved with Breaking Bad early on in the pilot. Mm -hmm. Uh, Two guys uh, that I worked with previously, uh, a guy named Tom Villano, who's a music editor, uh, who was the music editor for the pilot, uh, and also Thomas Golovich, who was ultimately hired as the music supervisor on the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I knew them both separately from having worked on things, and uh, they both called me on the very same day, actually, within a few <laughs> hours of each other, and said, you have got to see this pilot. Uh, they knew I would love it. They knew it was right up my alley. Uh, and uh, I, I raced over there and, and checked it out. Uh, and, and, and as soon as I saw it, I knew it was, it was really something special. Yeah. So, so I, I uh, stuck my teeth in it and, uh, and, and just would not let go until <laughs> they hired me. <laughs> <laughs> and but so the show the show is unique because it establishes in kind of an inevitable inevitable end to its main character and uh so when you mm-hmm. start when you started the show in season 1 how did you decide to approach it musically uh, because i I'm, I'm sure at the time you weren't certain that it was going to be a you know a big hit and it, it it wasn't even you know sure you're going to be picked up for a second season so no certainly we had we had no idea uh and uh it, it was there was a sort of a there was good and bad to all of that. Mm-hmm. I think there was a a sense that we could uh, creatively do stuff that couldn't be done for a number of reasons because we we had we had a wonderful support from both Sony and AMC right, yeah. to be very creative. Uh, and these are you have to remember these are the very early days of AMC as an entity. Uh, with its own original programming, mm-hmm. uh, Mad Men had just been on the air. It was just starting to make some noise, but it was a very small, and still is, small, small network. Uh, so, it, what it really did was gave us some freedom um, to to try to be creative, uh, not hopefully sound like most of what else was on TV, and and. In truth, the show certainly didn't look or feel like uh, much else that was on TV. Yeah. And, and Vince uh, Gilligan, the creator of the show, uh, while not having specific musical direction, uh, really 
pushed me to be to be as as creative and and uh, take and risk taking as as everybody else involved in the show, from the writers to the actors and the cinematographers uh, on down the line. And what was what did you want to do musically? What was your goal musically to do with the show? Yeah, I mean, musically, I my goal right from the outset. Uh, even though I, I come from all this classical training, I knew mm-hmm. looking at the show uh, that classical music was the wrong route. Or I shouldn't say classical music, but you, uh, classic Western orchestration mm-hmm. for the score mm-hmm. would be the wrong route to take. Uh, it, it needed something uh, that was consistently unsettling and consistently seemed out of place. Uh, and we, from the very beginning, the character of Walter White is is so milk toast uh, and and so bland um, that I, I wanted the music to hint that things were not all like that. Right. Things things were not all sort of hunky dory, and 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 that this story was going somewhere, even though we I didn't know at the time certainly yeah. <laughs> the extent that it was going to go. Uh, but I, th- but that clearly everything was not all right. And this was not a typical story, even though uh, at, at its offset, it seems like it's about a, an, a, a typical man. Mm-hmm. And um, so when you, when you guys finally, you know, when the, the, the show blew up to be as big as it did, and you guys, you know, you knew you were going to be sticking around for some time, did, mm-hmm. did, it, did it change the way you approached it musically? Like, did you anticipate... For you know the next season, or did you kind of give a, a big kind of keep a big roadmap in your head, or were you kind of still working episode by episode? I think I f- I really followed the show as it went along. I don't I don't think I I uh, until recently have thought about uh, too much about the end game in terms of the score uh, because I I don't know any more about it than anyone else. Uh, and I and I think the score in that way is uh, it's is very visceral. Yeah. It's very in the moment of what's happening in the show. Um, I, I don't do a lot of uh, uh, sort of foreshadowing in the show, and I don't do a lot of big themes that might help the viewer connect one thing to the next because uh, I, I don't think that's my role as the composer on the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, now that we know that it is definitely ending, and, and certainly I should say that, that that over the course of of things, the show, and we've always known this, uh, has gotten darker. Yeah, without question. Uh, not that it doesn't. Not that it starts out super light, but <laughs> but it, it 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 really goes to to new depths here, and and the score has certainly uh, reflected that. And now that we know that that, that there is a, an end. Uh, in sight, in terms of the number of episodes that are left, mm-hmm. uh, I will. The the few punches that I have been holding back uh, are are gonna <laughs> are gonna get landed here soon. <laughs> oh, can't wait! But uh, <laughs> so so when you guys approached this this fifth season, did you, um and what 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 was the decision making behind it? Like what why why five seasons? Why was this the right time to to end things? Yeah, I think uh, this. I mean, as you pointed out, that this story has always had a had a had a finite run to it, mm-hmm. uh, and I think uh, Vince Gilligan. And I don't want to speak for him, but I I think that he really felt like uh, the time had come, that he didn't really did not want to push the story past uh, the point where he felt like he could do it, and he and and the fabulous writers uh, do it justice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and on a high note, which is I I mean I, I agree with that. I always feel like some shows, while good, they kind of and if they keep doing well, they just ramble and ramble and ramble. And I, I love it when they say, all right, you know, it kind of gives it a, a structure and it says, all right, this is our end point, and you're working towards something. So I absolutely agree. And and creatively, uh, there's there's no no better way than to have the creator of the show know in advance. Uh, what he's got before him, so that he can complete the story in the way uh, and at the speed that he would like to. Mm-hmm. But as 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 you know, it, it is a business too. 
So you can Im imagine the pressures that are always on these folks, oh, yeah. spe especially on a, on a show like this that's taken literally years to catch on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that uh, for for those behind it to to say, oh, now we're going to end it, is is a very brave decision, and and, and I'm sure not easily come by. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, creatively, certainly, uh, as as sad as I will be to see it go, uh, it it is it is certainly the right creative decision. Right. And so after doing five seasons of of a show and looking back, did it feel did it feel like it took a while? Did it feel like a lot of work, or did it did, did time just fly by and it, you're like you're you're not? Uh, is it unbelievable that it's already over? It it both. Uh, when I look back on it now uh, and and know that I was I was putting music up against the pilot, and I think it was 2007. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard to imagine, and it's been certainly the the mainstay of my professional career and those over that time period. Uh, it, it, it has both gone by unbelievably quickly, uh, and yet uh, I'm astonished and, and, and my heart aches a bit that we're, <laughs> that we're, we're, we're on the final lap here. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so as a final season, did, you, did, you, did they come up to you at the beginning and say, all right, this is how it's going to end? So did you, did you know at least while you, when you started that you're working towards something? Or uh, Funny you should ask. I, I have the... The ability to read the scripts, uh, and I and I actually did meet in the writers' room with the writers a few weeks ago mm -hmm. to see to make sure they didn't have any questions for me as they're writing the script about some uh, situation that where music might play a role in the script itself or something right. that they needed to know in advance. Uh, but I, I sat in the room with them, staring at my salad, <laughs> avoiding at all costs looking around the room at the little post-it notes that show you what's going to happen right. because the last thing I want to know as a as a as a as the composer of the show and as a as a fan of the show like so many others is I don't want to know what happens right. and, and the beauty uh for me uh, about doing the music is that it as you know it's the, the very last step of the process yeah yeah and uh, and I'm and they've been under very understanding with me uh and wonderful that that, that I love to be able to sit down and watch the episode as it shows up in my studio. Uh, and I get it. It's nearly done, except for the music and the sound. Mm -hmm. And I get to sit and watch it like a fan and, and really uh, enjoy it, uh, which is hard to do for, for folks that work on a show who you know, obviously are so involved. It's the forest from the trees right, right. Right, situation. Uh, and, uh, and it also helps me creatively because, I, like I said, this show is so impactful and visceral that that uh, first of all I mean every aspect of the show is so top-notch the writing and the acting and, and how the show looks and edit, how it's edited that uh, it it's a great show to watch even without any sound mm -hmm. uh, so it really I get to watch it and know wow this you know be as surprised as anyone else at the twists and turns and then when I go back to to, to start working on it uh, I know in in my heart where those moments are and what I can do to even take it up another notch. Mm -hmm. And um, looking at the, uh, I mean, oh, sorry, sorry. If you, how much, how much music uh, do you compose per episode? How much uh, in the final mix usually is is there? It's it's increased over the years. Actually, mm -hmm. in the in the very early on. Uh, we were we were quite spare, and I think as as a rule compared to other things on television, we are spare with our use of music, quite on purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, but it has grown. I would say in, in in this last season four, we were probably up to twelve to fifteen minutes of score. Uh, certainly between ten and fifteen mm -hmm. for for the for the bigger episodes for sure. Uh, and that's not including the, the all the licensed musics that we use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I actually expect that to continue. I think uh, the story has gotten bigger, it's gotten grander and more epic. Mm -hmm. And and I think the that uh, having a, that foundation of score that's been building all these years um, is going to give me this final season. There's going to be some some good opportunities for me. I'm excited. Oh yeah, because I mean, different different TV shows use different music um, use music differently, and there's you know stuff like Lost, which is huge with music. But uh, I mean, I think shows that something like you know, like what you do, where it's you know ten to fifteen minutes, the music when it does appear, it has a more kind of meaningful impact, and you kind of notice it a little bit more, and it and it and it affects the viewer. 
a little that's, bit more. That's certainly my hope, you know, and I think I can get away with that on this show because it stands so strong on its own. Right. Which is a blessing for me because I'm never called upon to say, you know, make, strengthen this scene because it's not as strong as we wish it was. Mm -hmm. I'm always free to use music, as you say, uh, in its most impactful way. And hopefully when it does appear, it's meaningful. Right. Which it is. I, I think uh, it is. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. I hope so. And um, so... Looking forward, you also have a, a documentary called uh, Burn coming out. I do, yeah. Thick, in the thick of that right now, I uh, was just uh, announced that it's going to premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival oh, wow. coming up next month, so I'm very pleased about that. Uh, and it, it's fun. I, I, as, I, as I said, I come from New York and, and did work on a lot of documentaries uh, when I was getting going in my career, and, mm -hmm. and I'm so thankful to be able to uh, keep working on, on some of these uh, uh, high-level feature docs because uh, I really enjoy them. They're such a different challenge right. musically. And this one's uh, an urban decay story uh, about Detroit uh, through the eyes of its firefighters. And uh, it's, it's, it's quite something. I, I, didn't, I have to be honest, I didn't know too much about Detroit before working on this, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's quite a unique and, and dark but also hopeful situation. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the, the challenges for documentaries. What, what are some of the things that, that you encounter in documentaries versus a narrative film or fictional film? Tell well, film? yeah, it, you traditionally say that in a documentary the music serves a very different purpose, mm -hmm. that it, it's, it's there to help engage the viewer, to help make the viewer make connections and, and, and uh, between the points that a documentarian is trying to make. Um, but also, I mean, to be totally frank, to, it's to help, keep the pace up and, and, keep, and keep folks engaged. Uh, but I, in, as documentaries have been evolving, that's changed. Uh, and I, I first really noticed that a few years ago. I worked on a, a terrific documentary called Bigger, Stronger, Faster, mm -hmm. which uh, premiered at Sundance a few years ago. Also a feature documentary uh, about steroids which another topic I knew nothing about before I got into it, but, <laughs> but, uh, but is fascinating, the moral complexities of all that. And, and in working on that, uh, the guys who did that uh, really made it uh, a personal story. And I think you'll, you'll see when, when Burn comes around uh, that they've done the same thing with these firefighters in Detroit. And so now the line has really gotten blurred. And, and there, there are aspects of writing for these documentaries that, that are like a documentary, traditionally. But then there's other aspects that are very dramatic and not dissimilar from working on a, a dramatic feature. So it's uh, how to deftly navigate musically between, yeah, those, yeah. between those two worlds and, and try to keep uh, uh, a, a, a sort of continuity that, that, that keeps the movie together that I think is the real challenge now in, in, in these feature documentaries like these. And you don't, you don't ever want to, I was talking to some, I forget who I was talking to, but they were doing a documentary and I told them, is it hard to, to, do you have to remind yourself that you're doing a documentary? And they say, yeah, sometimes because the way they're doing them now, it's almost so, they're presenting it almost like a, a film and, you know, like a fictional tale. And, exactly. And you're trying not to disrespect or, or, or exploit anything that's kind of going on screen too. That's right. And, and there's a certain, uh, uh, weight and, and expectation of, of uh, truth, obviously, or or, mm -hmm. or or it's behind a documentary that you you don't want to lose by being overly dramatic, or or overly uh, I don't know empathetic towards any one particular character because then you're not obviously you're you're being biased right. as a composer and you're you're you have that power you have to be so careful of uh, to tilt the. The, the, the leanings of the film or the discussion of the film. And actually, interestingly, Breaking Bad has that same issue that comes up for me. One of the hardest things about writing for Breaking Bad is the tone, uh, knowing that there are no heroic characters. Yeah. And there's certainly no, I mean, there's no, going to be no great big anthems of of heroism for, for anyone involved in the show. Uh, and likewise, we have empathy. 
towards even the cruelest moments uh, that these characters represent. Uh, and not only that, but everyone's perception, for example, of, of where Walt is uh, on a moral scale at any given moment uh, is different. There are folks that uh, feel like he became someone awful in the very first episode of the of the entire series, and there are others who who will watch Walter White do anything <laughs> and still think that uh, he is morally sound and well within yeah. his rights to do it. <laughs> uh, and I and I and I I try to always keep that in mind because I I don't want to uh, inform uh, any given situation for any given viewer if I can avoid it. Right. I want them to be able to enjoy it and and have their and form their own opinions without my leading them in any specific direction. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well to to wrap things up I always I always like to to ask composers uh, this question. If you had the the chance to score any film ever made with no disrespect to the original composer, uh, what film would you choose? Oh jeez. <laughs> there are so many. Um, I think it would have to be Heat, Ooh, the good. Michael Mann movie. Not no disrespect to, as you say, the tremendous score uh, with the Cronus Quartet and mm -hmm. everything that that is there. But uh, but it, to it, and it, you know this is also. Uh, you're, this is, of course, totally hypothetical. Oh yeah, yeah of course. And, and, and if I if I, if I, if I had my druthers to do whatever I wanted, uh, you know what what a great great all of Michael Mann's movies are so gorgeous and mm -hmm. and and but what a impactful movie and such a, I mean obviously there is a lot of terrific action, but uh, like Breaking Bad in a way that there's so much of the action is internal. Yeah. And and I and I love that about his films, and I love films that are like that. Uh, and uh, and to me, that's when you can get your score inside the head uh, of a character that that you are absolutely enthralled with as a viewer. That's the most powerful moment for music. It's also, I think, one of the the biggest functions of score too is what they, it's what should be. That's what they're what should be doing, but <laughs> agreed exactly. It doesn't always get to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but you're right, and I, it's without without question, it's most powerful usage. Well, um, this this has been great. I, I really enjoyed this. Thank you so much, Dave. Um, oh, my great pleasure. And uh, I'm sure everyone is counting down till till July. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. have, have you have you actually started working on it? Are you are you working on episodes right now? I'm not, and in fact, they haven't. Uh, I don't believe that they've started shooting, oh, but okay. it's coming up very quickly here, and uh, I, I imagine by next month, uh, uh, the uh, the DVDs will start showing up at my door, <laughs> and I'm as excited as everyone else to see where it all goes. <laughs> all right. Well, um, hopefully, we get to do this sometime again. As I really I enjoyed so. it. Thank you so much, Kaya. Thank you.